Um, okay, so what Australia Day, Invasion Day, Day of Mourning, Survival Day means for First Nations people and the grief of the day. Wow. <laughs> when Pastor Jill asked if I could write and address our congregation on what Australia Day means to First Nations people and the grief that transpires on the day, I froze. And I just thought, hmm, okay. It took me a few hours to digest this request as it is such a powerful and multifaceted question that evokes many emotions and feelings. I was honoured to be asked to speak about this, but I was also very scared to talk about it at the same time. This response is the general, and let me say general, feeling that many First Nations people feel when January 26 comes around. Let me start this with an advisory warning. The opinions and ideas that I will speak about today are that of my own. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture spans many nations, languages, language groups and clans all over Australia. The best way to explain it is to imagine the tribal groups of Australia as being separate countries in Australia, uh, like that of Europe. So each country in Europe have their own culture, language, tra traditions and customs that are unique to their own land. Same can be said for our First Nations. So for me to explain this day for such a large group of people wouldn't be correct. I will speak to you based on my context, my story, my connection to my people and how I've lived being Aboriginal in a mainly white society and what that day means to me. So when you meet a person who identifies as First Nations, you've only met that one person. One does not describe the many. I'd also like to note that some of these messages may be a little confronting to you. You may have questions, you may have reservations, and that's okay too. The best way is always to listen first then ask questions. Although it is not always up to Indigenous people to educate you on black history, most of us have been educating you our entire life. So, Australia Day was never really a thing growing up in my house. We didn't really talk about it other than it was invasion or survival day. It's when our mob were sad. I remember as a child, my parents would take me to La Perouse at an Invasion Day event at the beach. They had stalls, Aboriginal art, food, craft, and us Jarjams, babies or children, would just play. And at the end of the day, there was fireworks. Other than that, we didn't really talk about it. It was just another day. Dad would be home because it was a public holiday and we just went our day like normal. Um, my mother always taught us to be proud of our Aboriginality, that we were the lucky ones. For me, it wasn't really until my 20s that I understood what Invasion Day was about, and that knowledge and learning has continued to this very day. The thoughts I have about January 26 has evolved as I've grown. In my early 20s, I just wanted to be like everybody else. I would celebrate and have barbecues, wear Australia Day costumes, have Australian flags tattooed on me, to have the zinc all over me, and just have a good time. But in my stomach, I knew that that wasn't right. But I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to be rejoicing, but I didn't want to act different to other people. I just wanted to belong. I grew up in a suburb very much like Camden, called Lugano on the Georges River. It was very, a very middle to upper class white society where the majority of the people were very comfortable and living the Australian dream. I grew up in Aboriginal Housing Commission in Lugano. There was only two houses. My mum still lives there to this day, 47 years. But when my mum first went there, there was a petition in the street to kick her out. The whole street rallied to kick my mother and my brother out because they were Aboriginal. They obviously didn't win and they haven't met my mother, but <laughs> that was my entry into the world, to fight. To fight for a place you call home. That is the plight for Indigenous Australians today. To always be fighting, to always be able to call something home. To be able to speak our truths without judgment or fear. We are used to fighting, this is our birthright. So when January comes along every year, I do feel that pit in my stomach, this burden that not only am I fighting to explain my Aboriginal identity on a daily basis, I have to pick another heavy opponent to fight, Australia Day. 
It is the day that divides our nation, and it's also a day that divides my mob too. If you speak to different First Nations people, you're going to get different answers on how we feel about Australia Day, whether it is to keep the date the same, to change the date, or to abolish the date completely. We all have our different responses. For me, I love Australia, all that it has to offer, the people, the culture, and the life I live. I love being Australian. I love the land, and I love the connection to the spirit of this land. But on the other day, it is a day that changed my people forever. The day is why I'm fighting or I'm constantly educating people on my culture and how I'm continually explaining my Aboriginal identity to people with the barrage of questions and statements like, what part of me is Aboriginal? Which parent is Aboriginal? Are you one of the good ones? Did you get your house for free? Did you get university for free? Oh, you're too pretty to be Aboriginal. You aren't really Aboriginal, are you? This is what I've had to deal with. And now my two girls are treated very differently for that very same reason. One has very definite Indigenous features where the other does not. They will both be fighting to tell everyone about their identity being Aboriginal. It is this constant fight that is relentless and exhausting and all because of the amount of melanin in their skin. This is where the grief comes from to know you have to wear this extra armour around the day to protect you from listening to what is in the media, the community, or even extended family. It is a hard day. And even if you have all the facts, knowledge, statistics, figures, and try to have a reasonable and ethical discussion, there will always be somebody who will only take you for the colour of your skin, not on the truth. So it is important for allies and non-Indigenous people to support and have the knowledge and wisdom to dispel the stereotypes that have been created and the whitewash of Australian history and want to create an Australian day that is not a day, that is not on a day where my people were massacred, subjugated to slavery, stolen from their families, that caused intergenerational trauma and dismissed in the constitution of today. We were not even considered as people until 1967 in the referendum. I implore you to search and find out about Australia's real history and use compassion and empathy when reading about our black history and where this anguish and heartache and fighting has derived from. January 26th will always be a day of mourning for so many reasons. The idea that we as a nation could simply change the date to another day for me is just ludicrous. It's, it's a date that needs to be changed. If January 26 holds so much hurt, grief and heaviness to our oldest living culture, why couldn't you just change it? Where, where we can celebrate an Australian Day with this tapestry of all these different cultures and people. Not the day that reminds my people where the demise of our culture, language and the fight for our identity and acknowledgement in this country began. I know we do have a long way to go. But I also know we need wider Australian to help us pick up that fight because it's heavy and we've been carrying it for so long. First Nations people today carry the scars and burdens of our, of our elders, our elders and our mob, both past and present. We've had no other choice but to fight, fight for our existence, our culture and our right to be acknowledged. But we will continue to fight for it because of our connection to the land, because of our connection to the spirit and because of our connection to culture. My mum instilled in me from a very, very young age, Tamara. My name's Tamara, not Mara. Tamara, the only way we are going to win and to be seen as people is to beat them at their own game. You need to be educated and you will get an education. And this is the fundamental reason why I became a teacher, to make a difference, to show the real history of Aboriginal Australia and to show our First Nations children, you are more than what is represented. You are the future of the reconciliation. I want to thank Pastor Jill and, pa and Pastor Rowan for allowing me to speak upon this, especially about the truth about, of January 26. It is a very progressive action for a church to let a black gin like me stand up and telling you that I've been fighting and my thoughts on this topic. I could have given you a history, of, a history lesson of dates and statistics and facts, but you can find that. 
If you do want to know more and where to start, I'm happy to help. Happy to put you in the right direction. I just wanted to show you what Australia Day means to me today, with my voice and my knowledge on it. I know for the authentic reconciliation, you must first reconcile with our mighty creator. We are able to reconcile with each other until we do that. We are not able to reconcile with each other until we reconcile with him and for a better tomorrow. Wow.